Now, going back to this. So before you got born again, you were a child of the devil. Can we all agree with that? Yeah. That's not agree too heavily, but still. Because um, <clears throat> I'm not asking your spouse, okay? I'm talking to you. So you know if you were not. Now, so before you got born again, the devil was your father. Amen? Is that right? Now, here's what I find strange. When people get born again, for some reason, this religious thing comes on them almost automatically. It's really kind of strange. Because as soon as they get born again, all of a sudden it's, okay, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? You want me to do that? I'll do it. But if you don't tell me, if I don't hear you, I'm not going to do it because I don't do something wrong. So, God, you tell me, you know, lead me. If you'll do that, if you'll let me know, I'll do it. And then they stand there. Which is strange because now you're connected to God, right? But when, when, now get this, when you got born again, your nature got changed. He took out the old heart, put in a new heart. Isn't that right? So that means that now you are a partaker of God's nature. Why? Because he put his nature in you. Is that right? When you got born again, all kinds of, you know, characteristics change. Maybe not everything, but a, a good start. But now think about this. As a Christian, we only want to do what we know is God's will. That's good, but how we go about it sometimes limits God. But isn't it funny, before you got born again, you know, you'd go to work Monday through Friday, Friday evening, you get off work, you go home, you start getting dressed for the club. You didn't ask your God if you could get dressed for the club. Your, your God being the devil. You didn't ask him. You didn't go home, drop on your knees. Oh, God, Satan. I, 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 if you want me to tonight, I will go out and get drunk, but only if you want me to. And if you lead me to do it, then I will go out and be a very evil person, and I will do all these, these evil things. Isn't it amazing that we never ask his will when he owned us? You know why? We had his nature. We didn't have to ask his will. We had his nature. We did by nature things that the devil enjoyed. That's why devils hung around us. That's why some of us had devils. And that's why some of our devils were called our friends. And it's amazing. When you got born again, some of your devil friends didn't hang around you anymore. You know, hopefully you got some of them saved and brought them in with you. But regardless, but isn't it amazing how here now we're with God and we think, well, should I take a step? I, I can? Okay, thank you. Yeah, what? Yeah. Oh, oh, pray for this person? Well, if you want me to, you throw my hand over on them because I don't want to do it unless you lead me. I'm not going to, you know, and you're not going to be walking through Walmart pushing your cart and there the sick person walks outside and you're just going to be walking along and all of a sudden God's going to take your hand and throw it over on them. That's not how it works. God doesn't want a robot. Right. He wants people whose will is in line with his will. Even what Jesus prayed in the garden. He said, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Well, of course, he didn't want to go through all of that. But now, understand, now we know the will of God. The Bible says, don't be, well, <clears throat> the Texas version is, don't be stupid. Right? That's the Texas translation. You, no, you can't find it. Anyway, <clears throat> but it says, don't be stupid, but know the will of God. And he said, he has made known to us his will. How did he do that? Well, he does it through the word, but he also has it in our spirit. He put it into us. And it's amazing how much his will is in us, but yet we still want proof or we want, we want to be pushed. And he doesn't want to push. He wants us to voluntarily do what we see his son do. His son is our example. You know, as I said before, you know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 that of these all died not having received the promise. What promise? The promise of the Father, the promise of the Holy Spirit. Now get this. They had the Holy Spirit dwelling with them, but he said he dwells with you, but he shall be in you. See, they didn't have that. Elijah didn't have that. The Spirit abode on him or came upon him. But with us, the Spirit came within us Amen. and abides. And actually the word dwell means to settle down and make oneself at home. So that's the question. Now, the only way he can make himself at home is if you give him access to every room, right? And so you have to give him access to every room in your life. Now, 